If I told you this guy was one of the most sub to you might not believe me. Thor, or as you might know him, Pirate Software, has gone from 10,000 subscribers on YouTube to over a million in two months. Most people would look at this and think it's just a fluke, but Pirate Software is different for most people. Just listen to him talk. Why would we uncheck the box to notify subscribers? And it sends it out to those subs, and they don't interact with Wait a minute, people aren't interacting with this. I won't waste my time with it. If you turn this off, it sends it only to people who aren't subscribed to you yet. So what does a random 30 year old know about YouTube that we don't? In this video, I'm gonna break down Pirate Software's rise to the top of your YouTube page. By looking at Pirate Software's numbers, something insane is revealed. Thor attempted streaming and content creation for years with minimal growth, but a few months ago, Pirate Software completely blew up. The first thing you'll notice when you discover Pirate Software's streams is that it streams on multiple platforms at once. At this point, everyone knows you don't grow on Twitch, and Thor clearly knows this because all of his new users that are coming from YouTube, but he streams on Twitch. So why not just stream on multiple platforms, growing his audience as much as possible, tapping into different corners of the internet. Although the live concurrent viewers during his live streams tell a slightly different story. So on any given stream, Pirate Software will have a few thousand viewers on Twitch and only a few hundred on YouTube. And I'm sure I don't have to explain to you that it doesn't make sense. Pirate Software should have more viewers on YouTube. So why is this happening if it's way harder to bring people to Twitch, even though 99% of his viewer base came from YouTube, specifically YouTube Shorts? Pirate Software Shorts are on another level when it comes to short form content. Once Thor starts talking, the viewer is instantly engaged from the subtitles in Thor's voice. The director of CS came and he said, I want the names. And I said, I'm not giving you the names. You're just going to fire those people. And he goes, I'm going to go to your boss. I was like, do it. My boss is like, you got the names? I was like, yeah. And he goes, you going to give them to him? And I was like, no. And he goes, he's not going to give you the names, bud. Subtitles are an active watch activity instead of just listening, which is passive. This makes the viewer more engaged themselves in the content rather than the creator trying to prevent the viewer from leaving. If Dream has taught us anything, it's that audio is king. And if you've seen or rather heard a Pirate Software YouTube short, you'll most likely know what I'm referring to. Went back to the doctor. Doctor's like, hey, sometimes in your early 30s, your voice can change as a man. You'll most likely notice how good of a voice Pirate Software, or rather Thor, yes, his real name is Thor, how good of a voice he actually has. And a lot of this is due to his mic setup, but everyone who makes content or just even one knows the audio is amazing because anyone will watch a crappy video with good audio, but not everyone is going to watch a good video with terrible audio. However, we can't talk about Pirate Software without mentioning his main aspect, or rather what his streams revolve around entirely, which is his game development. Thor created many games and successful ones too, with notable people like Jacksepticeye even playing them. Time of the morning, chill ladies. My name is Jacksepticeye and welcome to a game called Hardbound. From his multitude of cybersecurity and game development, Pirate Software didn't have to create his community from nothing. People wanted to see into the world of creating a video game, which only helps when trying to be successful online. However, this was kind of the limit of his success for the type of content creation we know now. Most people who create shorts or TikToks all have the same problem generally. They can't cultivate any kind of community or audience, but Pirate Software did exactly that. They'll have rooms at any conference and no one will show up because their viewers aren't connecting with them. It's insane views when it comes to shorts and can back it up with a multitude of long form videos pulling in over hundreds of thousands of views. This is because Pirate Software tapped into the genius of YouTube shorts, which is finding new active users which is actively helping pushing your channel in the shorts feed just by people watching them. I mean, the shorts carried pirate software, right? Well, not exactly. He's still missing one important thing so that he can use his YouTube shorts to their full potential. And that is his credibility. So I worked at Blizzard for seven years. I worked on everything from World of Warcraft vanilla all the way to Overwatch. If you've ever seen a pirate software YouTube short, you know what I'm talking about. Thor makes it seem like he's a god and knows so much and he graciously gives his knowledge to us mere mortals or something like that. In all seriousness, whenever Thor talks about his personal experience, whether it's Blizzard firing people, getting over it being a fun, not fun game. Who here has played Getting Over It? That really difficult rage bait game. Some people find that fun. He says it was so much conviction you instantly subscribe, or that's at least what you should do right now. See what I did there? Pirate Software didn't just use YouTube Shorts well, because any random person could have done that. It doesn't take the most skillful person to execute it either, but what it does take, and what Pirate Software did use, was his experience and credibility mixed with great storytelling to create quick bursts of highly digestible content that everyone will enjoy. Best Software and Game Development Streamer I feel like this category was created for one man and one man only. This category was created for Pirate Software. 